Hey guys, it's Noah here, and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and review of the Logitech G502 Proteus Spectrum Wired Mouse. So uh, this is a wired mouse, not wireless, which means you will not be needing to use a USB dongle. It'll plug in directly to a USB port that you have, and it will um, never have to have its batteries replaced because it not, does not have any batteries. So the reason I mentioned wireless mice is because my prior mouse was the Logitech M187, I think it is. And if you don't know what that is, it is a very cheap uh, wireless mouse that's more like a travel mouse, actually, that I bought at probably an Office Depot or something of the sort. And um, I bought it in about probably 2012. But uh, the reason I mention that is because it's lasted me all this time. And while it is a pretty... Uh, moderate not really that decent of a mouse it has lasted this whole time which is something to say about Logitech they stand behind their products and they um, make quality products so uh, now into the actual mouse review and enough about uh, sucking up to Logitech so inside the uh, the, the mouse box it <laughs> comes with a um, little black carrying case right here and inside that is uh, five 3.6 gram weights five or six I think 3.6 gram weights so you can uh, apply the weights to the mouse to have it weighted however you want and uh, looking at the mouse right here it is a very beautiful and angular it has a very beautiful and angular design to it I, I kinda like the design and I like that um, they ditched the blue strip that was on the original the prior Proteus core on the Proteus Spectrum they replaced it with a black strip which um, I think that looks a lot better. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just look up a picture of the Logitech G502 Proteus Core and you'll see the blue strip that I'm talking about. So the button I just pressed right there was the free scroll button, which is one of the coolest features of this mice in my opinion. No, you do not break the scroll wheel. When you press that button, it allows you to spin the scroll wheel infinitely and um, when you press it to get the button again, it will uh, lock the full scroll wheel into ratchet mode, so basically it will uh, ratchet like a traditional scroll wheel. But um, I think that's a really cool feature because when you're in a long document or something's just taking too long to scroll, you can just turn on infinite scrolling, flick it, and just let it do its job. The, it comes with a very nice braided cable. I haven't had any problems with it snagging or anything like that and no tangling, definitely. But um, if you did not know, I use the Corsair uh, Strafe keyboard. So it plugs right into my keyboard and not my computer. And... Uh, Basically, the wire stays out of my way, it doesn't get in the way of the mouse, and it doesn't really seem to slow me down. I don't think I need a mouse bungee that bad. I don't think it's, uh, it gets in the way, but that might just be me and my mouse pad. I don't know. It might get in your way, and if it does, you can check out a mouse bungee to, pull a, to get the cord farther away from the mouse so that you don't get it caught up. It is a very, very nice feeling mouse in your hands, especially when you use the Logitech M187 like I used before. That mouse is just too dang small, and it does it just doesn't work. You need you need a proper size mouse for your hand, and this one fits my hand beautifully. I don't think I have I, I'm pretty sure I have average sized hands, so I don't know exactly how this will fit your hands. But if you have average sized hands, this should fit uh, fairly nice for you. As you can see, there it's got a magnetic compartment that stores the mag magnet not magnets the uh, weights. And it just uh, pops on and off. It does. It doesn't like pop off easily. It's held back. It's held by a magnet. And um, if you felt it, you know what I mean. It doesn't just fall off. You, you actually have to take it off. But it's um, if you bump it really hard, I suppose it could fall out. But it'd have to be a pretty hard jolt. Um, I like mine weighted up. As you can see, I put all the weights in it. And here, here right here is a. Um, a demo of the RGB effects that you can use in the software. Now I kind of fast forward to the software because I was playing around in it for um, like 20 or 30 minutes so I had to fast forward otherwise this video would be ridiculously long. Uh, right here I'm just going to demo what the scroll wheel can do. See how I can scroll right through this. This is just the Lord of the Rings PDF that I pulled up real quick. Um, basically it scrolls right through it really easily, no problems and uh, ratchet scrolling takes a lot longer than uh, free scrolling as you can see in an instance like that. You get three onboard profiles with the mouse and each one can be customized. You can customize the buttons of each one. You can make each button do whatever function you want. You can customize the DPI of each uh, profile and you can uh, set a custom DPI uh, plus and minus switches so you can adjust the DPI with using the switches on your mouse with using any one of the 11 buttons. And um, 
Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool that you can change the DPI. Of this, it does have a DPI of 12,000, but of course I'd never go up there. 12,000 is a ridiculously high amount of sensitivity. It, any little shutter that you give the mouse will make your cursor go flying across the screen. It's just unnatural to have that high of a DPI for me. I don't know, it might work for you. If 12,000 DPI sounds uh, good for you, then hey, check out this mouse. But um, the really cool thing is that you can have one programmable G key, which basically when you press it, it shifts all the other keys, essentially giving all of the buttons on the mouse a second function. So when you hold down the G key, it makes a button that, say, could do left click before, now you can make it do uh, undo or redo. And you can program that for any one of the buttons, you can program any one of the buttons to do any keystroke, any, um, any uh, function, it, it's, uh, you can, it's, sky's the limit here. And then the RGB effects I think are pretty cool. You can have a solid color, you can have a pulsating color, or you can have the RGB effects off. You can assign the RGB colors to whatever colors you, your heart desires. It matches the colors pretty clearly or pretty closely to what you see on screen. Um, I think that the colors, uh, they're, they're, there's a little bit of a blue tint to the when you use brighter colors and a little bit of a, uh, it, it just doesn't look quite white if you go with a white color that's actually white determined by the PC it'll look a little bit blue to it so basically to counteract that I just if you want a white color on your uh, mouse to match your setup like mine then what you do is make it a slightly yellow color because the yellow will counteract the blue and um, it will make it look more natural like a more natural white than it would if you were using the uh, the uh, white that's determined by the PC like I said, each onboard profile can be configured to any DPI, any functions, but you can also set it to um, profiles saved on your computer, which means you'll have to change the profiles manually, I believe, but you can have profiles that work with different applications. So say you use a lot of different controls with the app uh, Photoshop or whatever, then when you use Photoshop, the functions will... Uh, the functions will change than when you're using just a regular desktop. Like the the mouse profile can be linked to different applications, if you know what I mean. So uh, yes, very very in depth customization for mouse buttons. Very very in depth customization for RGB. Probably not as in depth as I like. It's nowhere near uh, Corsair's RGB profiling in the Q software but it is a good start and they always could just update the software which might give you more effects I don't know if it'd be that easy but um, I assume if they update the software to have more RGB effects then your mouse could have more RGB effects essentially and the only RGB elements on the mouse which I did not like is the uh, Logitech G logo and the uh, DPI uh, bars basically you can only change the color of those and there's nothing else on the mouse that lights up. I, I was torn between this mouse and the Corsair, uh, I think it's M65 RGB. The RGBs on that mouse looked ridiculously cool, and I would have been able to uh, pair it up with the RGBs for my Corsair Strafe keyboard. But uh, I did, wanted to go with Logitech because it had more buttons, and uh, I trusted Logitech more than Corsair. I'm not saying Corsair is a uh, non-trustworthy company, but I've had good experiences with Logitech mice in the past. Right here, what I just showed you was a tuning, uh, tuning in the Logitech software, which basically allows you to uh, tune the mouse precisely to the mouse pad you're using or the surface that you're using. And it has a couple pre-built-in uh, tunings that you can set up for um, if you have a Logitech mouse pad that you bought from Logitech then it has uh, custom tunings that it already set up for it and you don't have to set up yourself but um, I'd set it up anyways um, before was a heat map so you could see basically what buttons you pressed and I don't exactly know why that'd be useful but hey it has it anyways if you ever want to use it here's some gameplay footage of Rise of the Tomb Raider that I just had on my computer and decided to play um, it's not doesn't really make that much sense uh, showing off gameplay for a mouse I guess but um, hey, if you wanted to see it, here it is. Uh, it's basically just going to be me running around and pointing my gun at things and uh, moving my hand. So uh, if you're interested in that kind of thing, here you go. But um, overall, this is a very good mouse. I A lot better than what I had before, the stupid travel mouse I had. But it um, does live up to the Logitech name. Logitech makes quality products, and you can trust the brand you're buying from when you go with Logitech. 
Uh, I can drop a link down to, to where I bought it, which would be Amazon in the description if you want to check it out and buy one for yourself. And if you're interested in the Corsair M65, I can drop a link to that in the description as well if you want better RGB effects than the uh, Logitech G502. But um, yeah, that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, please uh, leave a like. And if you have any comments, questions, any kind of problems you have with this mouse or any videos that I make in general, just post them down in the comment section. I will try to respond to as many of you as possible. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.